คุณตวันทิวอักษรคุณพิสุทธิ์ยงกมล school directors executive members head of departments and all distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen very good morning for today and very pleased indeed to be here and it is my great honor to give to share some experience with you the I have been informed about 10 days ago. In fact, uh, I was informed by another slide that. Can you go to slide number two? Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was informed that I will. Share some idea in place of Dr. Vatana p o n Rangaptuk on the topic of k u l y u t and k a r p a t n a n a v a t k a m k a r i e n r u p y o k r a d a p p n s a m r i t k o n g p u r i e n And then, the day before that, I was informed to come to um, the topic of strategy and learning innovation development to enhance learners' outcome. And national educational test achievements, and to be delivered in English. From the topic alone, which is was uh, from before, I realized that people would think of innovation. What innovation is? I believe that people would think of ICT technology. Smartphone, tablets, something like that. It's something that very sophisticating, attractive, exciting, and challenging. Um, maybe I can show you something, the example of technology from the other side. This is a menu. Very big on the wall in somewhere in k a n j i n a m b u r i Unfortunately, I'm sorry for <laughs> the name of the restaurant we s h o w there. But the interesting point is that pork noodles waterfall. What is this stuff? I I think that f e r a n g s We this term I have to tell a j a n f e r a n g is a very good term that we cannot change, so we always say f e r a n g f e r a n g would be very confused. Why? What kind of waterfall? How this this would look like? So, in fact, it's just some kind of. I believe that this is either Google Translate or it could be some kind of apps that the shop put it in or someone I don't know. But the waterfall here, in fact, refer to. A kind of cooking beef or pork at medium rare, and the juice, the pink juice from the beef or the pork. In Thailand, we talk, we we always say it's nam tok. There's some kind of juicy part out there, and then it become to pork noodle waterfall. Or everything, rice steam with chicken soup. There's a lot of thing in the menu. <laughs> um, maybe the food seller got some kind of apps in his. I think this is a container, which is a glass container. People who want to buy the fruit probably cling to this too much or lean on it, and it may be broken at any minute. So Google Translate help. It come to Forbidden Island glass. <laughs> it is something supposed to be. Please don't cling onto the glass or hold it tight or whatever. But ga, which is a verb in Thai, turn to be ga, which is a noun in English, and then it come up to be island. k 
connecting sake. <laughs> Similar to this. This is at one hotel. I'm sorry about that pumpkin connection. Faktong chum chum as a verb in Thai language, which is you grace it, gracing fruit or graced fruit, graced pumpkin or grace sake that you saw previously, it turned to be pumpkin connection. On the left is a kind of cucumber. In English, it's called, in English here, it's called Tang Millions. Or Tang Ran in Thai. This guy failed two languages. He failed both in Thai and in English. Because Ran with something like scaffold become Lan in L, and that's million. And that's Tang Million. On the right hand side, banana water, wow. <laughs> Cultivated bananas. Another one, I'm sure, Farang Thai Kun Thai Rod. Because in Thai, it says Antarai. Ham Long Len Nam Boriweni. But in English, not dangerous. <laughs> to swim in this area. <laughs> so, all for us, or people who read English, I'm sure you have problem in, in, indeed. So it's supposed to be danger. Swimming is not allowed in this area or something like that. But it's come up to not dangerous. Take good care, Ajahn Farang. In Thai, uh, all the sides in Thailand, in Thai language, they are quite big. When it comes to English, it's quite small. I hope you can see. It says that prepare, preparing a night parking cart. <laughs> a night parking cart. So, <laughs> this is a problem of homograph or uh, homophone. Kun is a verb in Thai language, which means return. But Kun from Google, Google apps, Google translate, they don't know which context you want. So Kun is night. So you got the night card to park. Lucky you. Another example. You can see that this sticker is on the door. So it means that the shop or people who produce, who print out this label, they are successful. They can sell them. And some people <laughs> buy them to put on the door. So again, pluck, push, turn to be vegetable. Chili, chili pimp. This is some kind of chili dipping sauce or chili, uh, chili paste. And it's, it holds some kind of unique flavors from a particular insect, which is called mangda in Thailand, which is a giant water bug. It looks like this, it's not cockroach. And the flavor from this, and mangda in two connotations, two meanings, so it turned to be chili pimps. And it go everywhere over the world, wherever Thai people are. Please look at... <laughs> this is a big... Signed by the road. Unbelievable. You can never believe your eyes to see that soon, which means center, becomes zero. Again. Again, it's come to homograph of the same words but different meaning. I don't know zero, which is 
center <laughs> come to be this. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be the Royal Project Fruit Development Center or the Royal Initiative Project or something like that. But it <laughs> come up as zero development, you can read. Okay, not Thailand alone. <laughs> China. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. I don't mean it. I was so very confused. What the meaning of this? I'm I am a kind of curious person. I have to find out. It's Chinese language. I try to find someone. Until I moved to Sipatum University, we have many staff members from China. Please tell me, what is this? He said, oh, it's Chinglish. So previously, that are Tinklish. And now it's Chinglish. That, that kind of vegetable, I think that you probably stop your imagination. This is that kind of vegetable, prickle vegetable or preserved vegetable in China. So, we are not alone. <laughs> not only Thailand that we are struggling for English. You pro we talk a lot about this, that Thailand's English skills lacking behind or something like that. What should we do? You probably know this company, EF, or Education First, a global language training company. And they conducted a kind of survey, the English Profic Proficiency Index, a report which attempt to rank countries by the average of English language skills. Can you guess where Thailand? This is you can see that people who don't use English as the natives, as the native speakers, not the mother tongue. In Europe, come number one is the Netherlands. So people in the Netherlands speak very good English, near native speaker. But from here, when we group into, into uh, area, region, Asia, can you find Thailand there? Okay, I move you to another one. <laughs> Here is Thailand at number 56. Clearly this page over the internet. Number 56 out of 72. Proficiency, very low. So the countries that lower than, than Thailand is uh, Sri Lanka, Mongolia, Cambodia, and Laos. Luckily, we, we improved, or maybe they, they, they get more information from various countries. I believe, I, I remember a few years ago, Thailand was the second from the bottom. <laughs> now we move a little bit of, there are more countries to join in. So, teaching English or to get Thai students to speak English and to use English as the medium of education is always problems everywhere. Let we, let's see why classroom in Thailand, what happened? Does it look like this in your classroom at your school? A student sitting face a facing front seat, looking to the front, all sit like that. No one say no, this is Thai school. But please take a good notice that the boys at the row back, at, at the rear row, three chairs, how many students sitting there? Four. And the girls on the right, how many chairs? One, two, three. For how many students there? What's wrong? Uh, may I ask, director, please provide more furniture for them. Another one. 
uh, it is, it is, we believe as the educator, I'm, I'm, I have to tell you a bit of my background. I'm teachers of English and also the trainer of English language. I was in the program of MA TEFL program at Sinekar in Road University before, also PhD. And in this program, we, we train the teacher to teach English communicatively. That what we expect from them. And any time that we observe our students, our students are MA students who are teachers in school coming for the higher degree. Any time that we get into the classroom, we can tell immediately if this classroom's learner center or not. Look at the scene. If everyone sit first to the front, look at the blackboard. That's not student le learner center, is not. That's teacher center, easy to tell. And if it remains like that, until the end of the, the term, uh, until the end of the period, within the period, teacher center. And this one, it even worse. I feel very sorry for the boy. I don't. Can you see him? Poor him. Why they sit like that? Is it? A uh, learner center, it looks like a learner center, huh? They sit in group, but reality, I think that there are more students and fewer pieces of furniture there. So I, I think he looks li like a good student trying hard to learn, stuckling among friends. And then, what schools want from students? Learn hard and then exam like that. They say that this is traditional Thai classroom. Still remain in your school or not? Students sit quietly, listen to the teacher, and take notes. Let's see some other school some other classroom in some other monolingual countries. Why I chose only monolingual countries? I have found from my experience, some of my students were Filipinos, Japanese, Vietnamese, Cambodian, studying at Mosawa for the master degree, and Co Korean too. And any time that I ask them, they, the, the problems are the same. Japanese classroom, a lot better because each one can have their own seat, different from Thai classroom. Chinese classroom, my goodness, everyone got all the books in the front. To be fair to China, I chose another picture which looked much more sophisticated. So here, probably private school, expensive school, but the way they sit remain the same. North Korean, very reserved student, polite, well-disciplined, I suppose, looking from this picture. So. I think this is Korean, North, uh, sorry, South Korean classroom. You can see the flag in the front of the classroom. At least you see hands volunteering something. Have you seen that in Thai classroom? When we ask our students, do, do you have any questions? Please put your hands up. No hands. You, anyone don't have question, can you put your hands up? Nothing in the air. Oh, you've got no hands. And or that I could not put the blame on them. Look at curriculum and the practice of the, the subjects matters in the classroom. The student have been always expected to be 
quiet, obedient listener take notes. That what teacher expect from them. And I could not put the blames on the teachers either, because the teachers have no choices. You have to teach. I visited my student in one school in Bangkok. There are more than 70 students in the classroom. Even I, as a teacher, I have to squeeze myself. I have no space. I have no space. This is the public school. So, and then you expect, you put the blame onto the teacher. You don't teach well. The teacher got the microphone. She was teaching two students. All the rest are not studying, are not learning. They are talking, playing. Um, why don't I put the blame on either the students or the teachers? It, because of the socio-cultural factors are significant in Thailand. The expectation from the school, the administrator, the expectation from parents, they want to sit in the university, so study any subject is for the university examination, the entrance examination. I have to come a little bit to English language, where the area that I come from. I told my master's degree student that your job is to teach English for communication. But in reality, they teach English for examination. So the exiting traditional methodologies, is it the problem here of classroom? In Thailand, I was the product from that too. We believe that the teacher are the transmitter or giver of, uh, um, of the knowledge. The students are receivers of knowledge. So, teacher job, pouring the knowledge into the empty glass that happened, has been happening in Thailand for long. And the researchers say that teachers, even with training, tend not to teach the ways they have been trained, but the way they were taught. And the research supports the concept that most teachers teach the way they learned in school in their past. I also conducted a research, a study for my PhD, and I study on my student teachers. They are teachers in school, in college, in a university, four of them. I found that they have been trained to be good teachers of English, to teach English for communication. I found that among three, four, only one teacher changed their teaching habit. The other three, nothing. They try to use all kinds of mat materials in classroom because they have been trained, but they, did, they didn't know exactly how to use it. The teacher roles in tradi traditional classroom. Oh, someone showing me five minutes left. Five minutes left. I go now, I go now. Okay, the classroom passive learners they say that you killed your student. Please read, I go faster. Learning in classroom is not watching the spot like that, or else your student would be like that. I just want to, you to think about how you ride your bike. Did you have to learn the diagram of a bicycle in class? Did you have to remember the rules of riding bikes? Rule number one, do this. Rule number two, do this. Did you have to do heaps of exercises in, on cycling? Did you have to read lots of bicycle textbooks in the library? I think you say no. Can you learn or can you teach your student to ride a bike by studying in a lecture room? You learn how to ride a bike by doing. 
you fall and you try again. Each time you fall, you get a little bit better. That's the same thing that you can tell your student how to learn. And what is the teacher role? The teacher role is not to sit on the bike and ride for them. You are the facilitator, you are the coach. The thing that I would like to present to you is the active learning. I'm lucky that Kun Tawan has already shown you what the active learning classrooms are. It's nothing new, but when the idea come and they don't use it, it's still new. From the cone of learning here, which is by uh, you can, oops, sorry. This, uh, they say that in, this is the traditional ways of learning, and the expert, the researcher, believe that the active ways of learning, like what you have seen from, from the video from Kuntawan, that maintain or retain all the knowledge from the, stu the student. I go back a little bit for this, which is say that uh, if you read and within two weeks, you can remember only 10%. If you hear the words or listen, only 20%. And if you see only, only 30% is with you, the percent of the knowledge or the, the information. You have to, if you want to see and to hear that, about 50% within two weeks. You watch the movie, you could not remember everything. But if you say, you demonstrate, you talk, you give the presentation, 70%. And if you do it, it's higher. So, the teacher, I skip this, I skip this, but I would like to show this uh, from Broom's taxonomy. If you get your student to remember, to name something, to list something, to describe something, you can teach them only to remember. But if you come to column number three, if you get them to solve the problem, to show the way to do this, to illustrate or to complete the parts of something, you move them up to apply. The, the optimum should be to move them until to create something. This is not new, but the thing was that the teacher always go to, I'm sorry, I'm panicked now, how many minutes left? The teacher can do only remember and understand. How's about application? how do you get your student to analyze, to evaluate, and to create. So the active learning, which is not new term, is from, in fact, it's come out around 1990s, but how to practice. Uh, active learning stem from a student-centered approach or a, a, a student Learner Center, the same thing that Ministry of Education always say that our curriculum is learner center. In active learning, teachers are facilitator rather than providing the information. So problem-based learning, active learning, uh, cooperative learning, you know that well, I know, learn by doing or inquiry based. There are many techniques in there. If you find from the internet, they are there. Classroom discussion, problem solving, cooperative learning, role playing, case study, group project. In English language teaching, we also do that too. We have many activities that uh, focus on learner center. So you can see that the classroom uh, Time's up.
Thank you.